Um, okay, so that's going. Yeah, yeah. Make sure, make sure you start. <laughs> you, you, you post to the recording of the part. Yeah. When we start the stream. I started the recording. The stream okay. is going. Ready, and here we go again. And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land, and also like to welcome my buddy Rich. Rich, how you doing today? Doing good, Mike. Only. Uh... Two more days to go for working, and uh, then get to uh, go on a little bit of a vacation. Man, we'll that sounds more good. Yeah, we'll probably be spending more time on the road than we will in Texas, but it's still a good time to, uh, at least I'm not working. <sighs> yeah. There are worse things in the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for some time off, though. So. Mike, right. how, how was your week? Uh, it's been, you know, it's been good been busy Good. uh we this is again this is our first week in a long time where we get to just relax so first saturday where we don't have anything going on uh and then baby's dedication is tomorrow so my parents are coming in town so that's going to be a little extra but other than that it's going to be a great weekend and time and we can relax so uh up until Good. up until then so uh rich we got a pretty big show to talk about. We got uh, lots of sports to talk about, and uh, we might need to start talking some preview stuff for things well, other than baseball. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we'll be talking the Cubbies. Yep. They're limping towards the finish, but as of now, it, it's right now, they're, they're kind of like, so you're telling me there's a chance mode right now. Uh, I thought we were eliminated last night. No, we are not eliminated yet. Not eliminated. Uh, did oh did uh, did okay. We'll talk about it then. We'll talk about that. We'll talk yeah. about what needs to happen for them to make the playoffs. Yeah, and uh, as well as going into talking NASCAR, Mike. Um, what else are we going to be touching? On? We have power rankings. Um, and uh, what else? We we and then uh, we have um, we have power rankings and NFL talk uh, along with. Mass singer. singer. Yeah. Yep. All, All right. that and more, Rich. More. But it's time to roll the intro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. You know, Rich, sometimes when I do that, by the way, we're back. Um, sometimes when I do that, I feel like I am, uh, I'm the guy from, uh, I'm, I'm the, uh, let's get ready to rumble. And I, like, yeah. I feel like maybe I should submit it to him so that when he retires, I can be the guy that says, let's get ready to rumble. You'd almost need to submit it to, to the uh, network that airs it. Not, I don't think he has any control over saying who, who's going to take over his, he, who's going to take well, over the ring now. Do you know that he has the, the uh, copyrights to that phrase? Really? Yeah. He owns the copyrights to "Let's Get Ready to Rumble." Like he owns those copyrights, so he technically is the one that would have to like. I don't know if that's going to be in perpetuity after he dies, if he gets to hold it, or if uh, if it goes to the family, like if his family trust gets to to go, or if it just becomes public domain again. I'm not sure, hmm. but. Maybe I should submit to him and be like, hey, man, what do you think? Yeah, maybe. All right, Mike, we get, let's get right into this show. We always start with our poll question, Mike, and it's the last of our official Jock Jam Stadium song polls as the finals ended up being welcome to the jungle against Sweet Caroline. Yep. Mike, while you're looking up those results, where did you vote? I mean, do, does anybody have a doubt? I voted for Sweet Caroline. 
Okay. And how did you vote, Rich? I went with Welcome to the Jungle. I went with the song that a fan that's probably going to be used to bring up to um, bring a team out onto the field and get the crowd pumped before the game starts versus it versus the between inning song that gets the crowd involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like both, but Sweet Caroline to me just is so much better. Um, okay. And with that, Rich, we had nine votes cast. Solomon right. Troop, Sue Hart, Ron Lehmans, Mikey O'Roderer, and Nathan Ross, and I all voted for Sweet Caroline. That means there were three votes for Welcome to the Jungle. Katie Nielsen, or Kayla Nielsen, Haley, my niece, and you for Welcome to the Jungle, meaning our champion is Sweet Caroline. This week's poll question, Rich, I'm going to change it on you just slightly. Okay. Not a lot, just enough. Right. And that change is going to be Welcome to the Jungle versus We Are the Champions. Okay. Because our third place song has to go against our second place song. You can't just put the third place song against the first place song. Well, well, no. We Are the Champions is kind of like a bonus entry to the field. Oh. Yeah, maybe this... Welcome to the Jungle is second. This week we'll do well we'll do the we'll do the bonus song against the second place song and then next week we'll do the bonus song against the first place song. Okay. Just makes sense to me, right? Okay. You can't Unless just there's a rematch. And let, what, what, what what do you, so there could be a rematch between Sweet Carolina If and if Welcome, Welcome to the, the Jungle, Jungle wins, then it, then it doesn't even matter. Okay. Or we or we could then start going down the line and have it go against our third place song. I'll I'll let you run it, Mike. Okay. We need we, we need a we need a filler as we're because we're kind of in between what we want to do next for for some poll questions. We yeah. still got to workshop some things, uh, but we'll still have we'll figure something out for the next two weeks for poll questions. All right, but Mike, moving along in the show, the Chicago Cubs. Yeah. We started on a high, but it's kind of ended with ended on a really big low. Uh, so the Cubs had three against the Rockies, three in Atlanta, and now they're up in Milwaukee. Yeah, They swept the Rockies. They got swept by the Braves, and they dropped the opener in Milwaukee for a three and four record. Yeah, so before we look at the standings, Mike, what was your thoughts on those seven games? We needed to win. We needed to do something against the Braves. Uh, I don't understand. The Braves had nothing to play for. They, nothing. They, they, at, at the time, they still had. They needed they one. Had not, the, they hadn't clinched. The first game. The number, the number one overall seed yet. Just the first game. After that, they had clinched the number one overall. They had clinched number one overall after the first game, if I remember correctly. They had I no. Believe they, I believe you're correct. They did. So they had, So after the first game, they had no reason to. Now, I am not throwing a young man under the bus for making one bad play. Whole world's up in arms about how one, but one bad play costs us. Let me tell you something. A young man in 2003 made a bad decision. And everybody blamed him, blamed him for the Cubs not winning the C, the the NLCS and going into the World Series. But there was still a lot of baseball after that bad decision by Bartman. So, so which individual are you trying not? Are you trying to defend that didn't cost us the season, Mike? There was still. There's been lots of baseball since. But Seiya Suzuki's error did not cost us this season. I, I can I can agree with that, Mike, because we were up six to nothing, and gradually between leave, I, I didn't get to watch the game. I'm just going off of what the box score looks like. Yep. Between letting the starting pitcher Justin Steele, who I think is probably running on fumes at this point, 
yeah. and the bullpen is what I, I would not put the entire thing on Suzuki. I would put what happened before the Suzuki play that made it three to two. That made it that that made it six to five. That made it six to five. What happened yeah. in between? What happened with Atlanta putting five runs on the board to be put in that position for Suzuki to drop the ball, and that's what allowed the the, the tying and the winning runs to end up scoring. But here's the other side of that. How many games has Seiya Suzuki won for us this year? How many times has his good play allowed us to get out of a bad inning? Yeah, how many he times? Has been a solid performer. How many times has his bat started a a run a a, a comeback for us? You can't blame this man for one bad play costing us an entire season. Do I think? The last four games have cost us the 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 playoffs. Yeah, and we'll get into that in just a second. But I I refuse to call that out. Now, what I will call out: management. All right. David Ross coming into the final stretch hasn't been making great calls. He's allowed pitchers to pitch longer than they need they should. He's made some bad calls when it comes to who's in the lineup when that we've both disagreed on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to be the guy that says it's time for him to go. But is it time for him to go, Rich? I don't know. Has I, I David? I want to see. I, I want to see. You know what? I, I'll. I'll pass my judgment on does David Ross need to go or not Okay. until the season's over. Yeah. At the it, top of my head, the, the only guy that comes to mind that might be replacing him is Joe Girardi and has the game passed him by because miraculously the Phillies were struggling and re, were below 500. He gets fired. The interim manager, Rich Thompson, comes in and boom, they go on a run and, they're, and they lose in the World Series. Yeah. To the Astros. Yeah, there is something to be said for that. Um and and we'll get into the discussion next week oh, about no. it. I got I got some points, but you you point out that next week Cubs aren't I mean if the Cubs are still in it, it's a big question mark. And yep. we're going to get into what has to happen in order for that to happen here in a second, but um but if the Cubs are still in it, we'll continue to reserve uh, until the Cubs are officially out. Um, Rich, with that being said, it's closing weekend. There's a game today. Yeah, so. There's a game today and then a game tomorrow. And it, I, By the way, baseball does the best thing in the world with closing day of the regular season. Yep, all games starting at the same time. So there's no question of You're not you looking up and saying game. Yeah. Oh the Brewers and seeing, oh. the Brewers are up like tomorrow the Marlins are are playing and the Cubs are playing. Now we'll get into and the, the Diamondbacks are playing. And the Diamondbacks are playing. And we'll get into what how everything has to roll out in order for us to make it in there, but it do, we're not going into tomorrow's game saying, "Well, those teams won, or those, we be, we've officially been eliminated." Like, I mean, theoretically, we could, depending on how today goes. But mm-hmm. if we are in a position that we can, like, going into at the end of the day tonight, at the end of all the games tonight, if we are in a position to make the playoffs, we will not know. Until the end of the day. You could know mid-inning if you see a big number. But you could be scoreboard watching on Sunday. Right. To see, all right, is, the, is this team going to help us out if we win our ball game that we could get in? But yep. true, you're not going to know yeah, until but you, the end of the game. But, Rich, even if, let's say, the Cubs are playing and it's the fifth inning and the Diamondbacks are up six to nothing. Didn't this week tell us that we don't know that that game is over yet? Yeah. 
Now, do I think that... No, but this week told us, hey, even if the Diamondbacks are up six going into the ninth, you can't give up on it. It's anybody's game up until the game... Up until the fat lady sings, right? I think it is. But, I mean, for, for my thoughts on this week, seeing how the games ended in, ended in Atlanta, I thought that yeah. we should have won We should have won Tuesday's game, have yeah. kept not blowing a six-run six lead. Yeah. And the way we fought back on Friday and not being able to convert with runner, not being able to hold on to a lead in the top of the 10th, with the ghost runner on was just kind of disappointing. And even last night's game in Milwaukee. Yeah. First and third. First and third one out in the tenth. And we couldn't convert. Nope. Couldn't you, get it done. And and the problem with that is you're gonna lose a, if if you can't convert on something like that, that's gonna cost you more games than a guy miss a guy missing a ball. Yep. So Overall, a disappointing week, which is why I put a frowny face. Yeah, no, I totally the, agree. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, in the outline, but I think still you could a chance. I there's honestly, chance. I think you could put a frowny face on September, which is with with as good as they did pre September mm-hmm. in July and August. As great as they were, September has been a train wreck for the Cubs. It really has, and I think it just comes down to. I think we, we can probably say what no matter what happens in these last two games in Milwaukee, they probably overachieved this year. Oh yeah. And now and now we're seeing that they're just running out of steam. Yeah. They're just running out. They're run they're not running out of steam. So before we talk about the standings and what needs to happen, Mike, they got two in Milwaukee. Not taking into account what the other teams might need to do in the standings to help them get into the playoffs since they are a game and a half behind. Since they're a game and a half out right now. Yep. How many wins are they going to do? <sighs> see, you, you put it that way. And I want to see the Cubs win it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say one. But I, okay. I think, I think they will get one. I want them to get two. But I think they'll get one. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with the need side, not, not what's realistically going to happen. And I'm going to go two. Milwaukee doesn't have anything to play for. Yeah. Where do they drop two games? But they didn't have anything games. to play for last night. What did they have to play for last night? Yeah. And, and you could hear that in the broadcast in the late inning games. They went. They were going with. Well, I, I, it sees the council is going to keep his young bullpen arm out there and possibly rest his high leverage guys. Yeah. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. So. By the way, I mean, Milwaukee's in the driver's seat right now. Okay. Do they want to play. It's coming down to do they want to keep the Cubs out of the playoffs to possibly have a better home field advantage in that wild card game? Or do they want to keep the Cubs in town because they have the most tape on them yeah. and let them face them in that wild card round? So, so as I'm we start talking two. about that, let's. I'm going to go with one. And uh, Rich, let's talk about how those standings look. So going into the final weekend, the Cubs, like you said, the Cubs are up, uh, down a game and a half behind Miami, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, behind the and Marlins. And the Marlins have the tiebreaker. Yep. So the Cubs need to win both of their games and the Marlins to lose both of their games. Yes. So if at we, the same time, Arizona is a half a game. For the second wild card spot. Right. So. But the Cubs still need to win two games. The Cubs they have to win two games. They're not going to be able to get in with a split because they don't hold any of the tiebreakers between Arizona, nope. Miami, or Cincinnati. Right. So the Cubs have to win two games, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. We need the Marlins and the Diamondbacks to both lose both of their games. And that would get us in the third spot because we would lose the tiebreaker to, right? Because yeah, we, we wouldn't be able to jump up to two. Right. So, Mike, the Marlins are in Pittsburgh for the closeout the weekend, and the Diamondbacks 
have the Astros in Arizona. And it means something for Houston, too. It does. Houston is fighting to stay in the playoffs as they are currently holding the final American League wild card by just a game. But they could also get in as the division champs as yep. they're only a game back of the Rangers. And also Seattle is two games back of the division. Is in two games back of the division. Um, by the- you see the Rangers are actually facing the Mariners. So by the time Sunday Sunday night rolls around, yep. you could totally see the Mariners go from three to one based on how the series with the Rangers goes yep. and how the Astros Diamondbacks go. Okay, so that there's that. The better thing is, I mean, here's a here's a crazy thought, and this is more probably more for a Tuesday conversation, but mm-hmm. as of right now, this will be the first time in thirty plus years, if I remember correctly, that there's not the the Red Sox, the Yankees. Or the Cardinals in the playoffs. Okay. Yeah, because didn't they make that? That was like the first. I don't. I don't remember seeing it, but I think it was like the first time since the '90s that the Cardinals have finished last place in their division. Crazy. I would have never thought that it was going all the way back to like '90. I want to say it was '93 or '96 that I saw. That yeah. just goes to prove how good the Cardinals have been for so long. And it, that wouldn't surprise me if it's the, if you're saying, I don't know if it's quite 30 years. First time in the, 30 years. Yeah, first time in 30 the, years. That neither the Yankees, the Red Sox, or the Cardinals have not made the yeah. playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. If you look at it, if they're saying, you said 96? I think it was 96 or 93. I saw the, the last time the Cardinals finished last in the division. Right. Also... Those mid '90s Yankees, those guys were good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it goes back 30 years since any of these teams were not in the playoffs. Yeah, and it, it's just crazy through through luck of scheduling to see how many of these games matter for the final, yeah. for the weekend. Because yeah. the American League West still doesn't have a clinch division winner. And wow, the American and the American and the American League and National League wild cards do not have are not none of the teams are fully locked in. By the way, Rich, I was wrong. Oh, it's since 1990. That's 33 years, hmm. almost four decades. Like. How ridiculous is it that this has happened? Exactly. Then, on, then on top of it, uh, to add, I mean, I would, I, and again, I don't know, I don't have these numbers exactly memorized, so I apologize. But I would guess if the Cubs get eliminated, you're going to see that go to the mid '80s, right? That all four of those teams, because I think the Cubs probably made it in. In the late 80s, they had some of those good teams where they made the playoffs. And then um, you looking it up, too? Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. There's an easy way to look that up. Okay, we'll get back here. Uh, da, 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 89. Yeah, it's all giving me stuff about drought. It's not necessarily one, all three of them all missing the playoffs at the same time, but. So because of all of the, because we have, there is, so because the fight, the playoff bracket is not finalized and there's so much on the line these these last two days of the regular season mike and i will be doing a special midweek episode which we've decided is going to be tuesday 
to give you our final MLB thoughts. Uh, so that show will mostly pertain to looking back at our standings predictions that we did in the preseason, giving an updated updated matchups pre postseason, and if the Cubs are eliminated, our final thoughts on the 2023 season. If they're not eliminated and they make the playoffs, then we'll reserve that conversation to uh, our show on October 13th or 14th. Mike, before we move on, do you have that number? So 89, the Cubs made the playoffs. Okay. So at least 89. At least uh, 89. I'm, I was going to look up a few other uh, things real quick. Let me see if they have it here. Um, and I'm just... Because back in the 80s, you were, there were only... There was no wild cards. There were no three divisions. It was an East and a West Coast. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's accurate. Um, what you, okay. And the Yankees were the. I don't. I think even during the eighties, the mid eighties, like the Yankees and the Red Sox weren't necessarily powerhouse teams that they are right now. Yeah, I that's mean, accurate. And the Cubs were kind of hit or miss. Um, they were either really good or they were really bad in the eighties. A lot of baseball to watch. Make sure to watch. Yeah, watch the games. They watch matter. The games follow the if games. you can. They are going to matter, especially that crazy Sunday. That crazy Sunday where you could see the entire playoff picture flip between what it was at the closing games on Saturday to when the final all the dust settles on Sunday. So, at least as far back as. 87. Good. Uh, I think 88. Yeah. Yeah. 87, 88. I mean, all four of those teams all missed the playoffs. Well, the Cardinals at least made the playoffs in 87 and 88. Okay. So, so it might be going all the way back to 85 when all four of those teams missed the playoffs. Yeah. In my lifetime, basically. Gotcha. How all right, Mike? Go ahead. How crazy? That's all it was. It is all right, Mike. Do you see what's coming up next? Is it a left turn, Rich? It is a left hand turn. And Rich, after that, that's another left hand turn. Tell them why, Mike. Because we're heading into the NASCAR corner, presented as always by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Check them all out for all your sports memorabilia needs on Fifth Avenue in Moline or on their eBay store. Once again, that is. Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Okay, Rich, we are, uh, last week, let the folks know how it went. All right, so last week they were at Texas Motor Speedway for the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Your race winner was William Byron. Mike, both of your drivers did better than mine. So uh, you got picked up two points, increasing your playoff lead to six to two and the overall being 20 to 19 as Martin Truex Jr. finished higher than Tyler Reddick uh, with Truex finishing 17th and Tyler Reddick finishing finishing 25th. On the playoffs, on the non-playoff side, Kevin Harvick finished 6th and Carson Hocharver finished 16th. Okay. Uh, All right, Mike. This week, um, any, any thoughts on Dallas before we move on? Man, I love that race. That racetrack is getting good. Um, I do see that you have a few things in here to talk about. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of things on it after for news uh, after we get okay. through the Talladega stuff because there is some big talk to talk about uh, in there. Uh, and some are rumors, some are not. Um, right. But the Dallas race looked good. You could start seeing uh, – so I think it was last year they stopped putting the prep. They basically put like a glue uh, pre-packaged – rubber stuff on the concrete to make it easier to make those turns. Um, mm-hmm. And it makes lesser drivers able to make the runs better. But it also makes for less entertaining and less exciting racing. And you can start to see that get washed away and taken off 
uh, as the cars drive through it. And so with that, the racing is just getting better in Texas. And don't get me wrong, I've always liked Texas. I've gone to Texas. Uh, I would like to go back to Texas. Um, but I think the next racetrack I probably go to is Vegas, if not Kansas City. Um, but with all that being said, uh, good race. Um, good to see uh, some of them see things uh, tighten up in our match. Rich, let's. Uh, do you have any thoughts before we head to Talladega? No, um, I don't. We we had other plans on Sunday, and we got, so I really only got to see the tail end of third of the third stage. Okay. Um, so I really I don't really have much to share much about the Texas race. I am looking forward to getting to watch the Yellowwood Five Hundred at Talladega. So, uh, so Mike, you have the honors. Who are your who's your playoff driver and non playoff driver for Talladega? There's a guy that needs a win, and. He does really well at super speedways. And I'm going to pick Bubba Wallace. All right, Mike, and your non-playoff driver. Uh, I'm going to pick Chase Elliott. All right. So, so Mike, I'm going to go with two Fords because the Fords tend to do well at these super speedway racers, races. So I'm going to go Brad Keselowski for my playoff driver as uh, it seems like RFK always puts together a good package for the uh, – for the super speedways and for non-playoff i'm gonna go with todd gilliland who quietly puts together a top 10 race on these super speedways but with it being a super speedway you never know what's going to happen yeah so it's gonna be fun to watch it's gonna be on nbc so and as long as with the rest of the playoff races will be on network tv no more cable races than the rest of the way out yep all right, Mike, so we got some announcements for next year's schedule and a driver selling off his truck team. So, Mike, where yeah. do you want to start? Um, do you want to start with what you have, and then we'll go into what I have extra? Sure. So mine are probably really quick hits, not really too much discussion, I guess. Anyway, uh, but the, the NASCAR season, the NASCAR has announced that they are going to be returning to North Wilkesboro for the 2024 All-Star Race. Yep, that's exciting. And, yeah, and North Wilkesboro did say that they are going to get a repay before that for that race as well. And that that is even more exciting, by the way, that so that they are putting that much repay. money into it, uh, is huge. Yeah, so hopefully that could lead to them not just getting an exhibition race, but maybe added to the schedule permanently. Yeah, yeah, I uh, for a point for a for an actual points race instead of the exhibition. And uh, also the Indy, the Indianapolis Speedway uh, will be their their annual race will be returning to the oval layout. Yeah, so you won't see the cars on their road course layout. So they're going to be bringing back the Brickyard 400. Yep, and that's exciting for me as well. I love seeing that. Um, I the that race is just huge, uh, and yeah, I'm super stoked to see what's uh what's to come there yeah and the final nascar note that i have for just talking about news is that kyle bush has sold his truck racing operations to spire motorsports and that also includes the uh, rowdy manufacturing chassis manufacturer and uh so that's all being transferred to spire motorsports when i was kind of reading into this it the, the one rumor that I got out of this is that maybe he's going to use the profits on this sale to buy into RCR so his son Braxton has a pathway to get a seat in the uh, to get started in the development program yep. instead of him keeping keeping uh, Kyle Busch Motorsports going so that Braxton eventually had a ride in could take over his truck ride permanently so be interesting to see I guess uh Kyle Busch Motorsports was the all-time winningest organization in the truck series, though, with, like, 43 victories, though. Yeah. Um, they, they, no, no, I'm sorry. No, they got up to 100. I think Kyle Busch himself had 43 of those victories. Okay. Uh, driving his sense. own car. So, Mike, what do you have on the NASCAR news front that you want so, to touch on? So, there are some rumors that came out of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s podcast. Did you hear about these? I did not, so go ahead, Mike. So, first... Uh, and this is one that uh, I that is kind of exciting. It 
sounds like they're going to get rid of the Roval in Charlotte as oh. well. Uh, that okay. that looks like it's going that. away. Then the one that actually makes a big difference for you and I. All right. We might. This, this is how he phrased it. He said something to the effect of, we might be going to Iowa. A cup race coming to the Iowa Speedway. Yeah, how great would that be? It would be great. I, I, that's that's the shortest drive. Oh yeah, that we have. Yeah, and we us. we would meet you in the. I would meet you in the middle at least. Um, we might meet you in the middle, or we might meet you all the way in the Quad Cities, and then I might come with you to the middle. But uh, yeah, that is. Super exciting yeah. for us. I had not heard anything about that. That I had heard about the Charlotte Oval returning and doing away with the role for layout. Yep. Um, so yeah, but I'm sure we'll have a. We'll be talking once they fully announce all of the race schedules and the dates and the layouts. We'll be talking about that uh, during the NASCAR off season or during the preview. Yeah. Mike, anything else before we exit the NASCAR corner? Um, I don't have anything else. All right. Neither do I. So that was the NASCAR corner. Presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, and Fifth Avenue, or you can find them on eBay. Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Mike, take us into the gridiron. Okay. As we do every week, we talk about Thursday Night Football. We had two Thursday Night Football games to talk about as we recorded in the middle of the Giants 49ers games. We both picked the 49ers, and of course, the 49ers won. We also picked locks of the week. Um, last week's lock of the week for me was the Bills over the Commanders, and boy did they ever thirty-seven to three Bills, uh, which is what I picked. You picked the Cowboys over the Cardinals, and they won twenty-eight to sixteen, bringing us both to two and one for locks of the week. By the way, you are two and one for Thursday night. I am one and two, Rich. Let the people know about our upset specials. All right, actually, the lock of the week, my lock got picked as the Cardinals. I, I actually feel the Cardinals won that game 28-16. to 16, Oh. So that drops my that record. dropped down you two, down. Okay, sorry. And the two and one. Yeah, On the should. upset specials, I went with the Saints. You went with the Saints over the Packers. The Packers won 18-17. to 17. Dropping you to one and two on your upset. So it was a close game. Ultimately, the Saints were up like 17 nothing at that point and let the Packers back into the game. Over on my upset of the week, it was the Ram. I picked the Rams over the Bengals. The Bengals finally get their season vic- first victory of the season, going with a 19 to 16 victory over the Rams, dropping my record. I'm bringing my record on upsets to two and one. Okay. And the lock lock of the week that we had but we couldn't pick it as a lock of the week was the Bears and the Chiefs the Chiefs won 41 to 10 bringing our record both of our records to picking Bears games up to one and three Mike tell them how the Lions Packers went so the Lions Packers in a great game by the way uh, the Lions, we both picked the Lions. The Lions won 34 to 20, bringing you to three and one on Thursday Night Football and me to two and two right at 500. Rich, uh, did you did you get to watch any of the games? And um, how I, do you feel about I it? I did. We had the, we were watching the Chiefs Bears. We had the Chiefs Bears game on uh, because uh, my nephew JD is a big, uh, big Chiefs fan. And. So we had that game on in the background. We knew that by halftime, that, that that game was just looking ugly. Yeah. Ugly. We weren't expecting, I did, I guess I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. And it, it's right now with the bad as the Bears are playing, are they, are they tanking for that and trying to get that number one pick to have to possibly get picks one and two in the draft since they get Carolina's pick as well. Yeah, it's man, it's hard to say. Uh, I would think uh, I would think that it would be yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. 
The Bears are might be tanking, but I really wish they won't wouldn't. Yeah, me me too. I mean, there's it, it's just so odd. I mean, I heard that uh, I was watching one video where they were talking about how bad the Bears are doing. Is it? Or, or is this still a rebuilding organization, or was the media, even us, us ourselves, overhyping the Bears? And to where they we were talking ourselves up that they were going to be good enough to make the playoffs with the additions that they made, but in all reality, they they're still a little ways off. Yeah, I think they are a ways off. I think they are, and I don't think that's any. I like. I thought they were going to be a better team than they were last year. And they are proving me wrong. Um, by the way, I saw a terrible statistic today. All right, what's up? How many teams in the league have had wins since Elon Musk bought Twitter? I'm going to have to say that the Bears are one of them that does not have a win. You are correct in that. Mm-hmm. Do you have a guess on how many other teams are not in that, do, do not have a win? The answer is zero. The Bears are the only team to not have a win since mm-hmm. Elon Musk bought, finalized his purchase of Twitter. How's that make you feel, bro? Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. So That's bad. And I, and I don't know... I don't know if it's. Uh, I'm kind of torn on what to how to pick their next two games. So, but we'll get into that. As far as a pro, uh, our uh, our pick 'em challenge shout out the um, the winner of the week. The winner of week three was Zach Borchers with uh, twelve points. Nice. Uh, yeah, Mike. I was tied for second with ten points, and uh, Mike, you were last in week number three with only seven points. That is over, terrible. Yeah. Uh, overall standings, our shout-out goes to Troy, who is first. Uh, uh, well, I mean, we have points. two teams that didn't pick anything, so those two were last. But yeah. we're eliminated. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in second place with 32 points. And, Mike, you are six with 23 points. Essentially so last. Far. Essentially lost because I don't. I think I think we lost two people. Yeah. After the first week. All right, Mike. So week four. Yep. Um, because I'm gonna be. Uh, we'll we'll go th- uh, probably during that Tuesday show during Tuesday's pre-show. I'll give you my picks for week five for a lock and an upset since I won't be on the air with you next week. Sounds good. Uh, for the Saturday show. Uh, so I gave you the honors for for uh, week four, even though it's an even week. So Mike, who is your lock of the week? You know, I'm going to go with the San Francisco 49ers over the uh, Arizona Cardinals. I, I like that pick. That, that's why I went with the Cowboys over the Cardinals last week, and then the, I guess the Cardinals got the memo that, hey, you, you, you need to win some games. They, uh, and they, and they, stunned the Card- they stunned the Cowboys. I picked it because I think the Niners, I mean, we'll get to where they, we have the, the power rankings, but I think the Niners mm-hmm. are good. Uh, I do too. So for my lock of the week, I'm going to go with the Eagles over the Commander. Now, Rich, I, we've already picked, but who is your upset of the week? My upset of the week, I'm going to go with the Texans over the Steelers. I, I don't think that there were a lot of a lot of good upset picks to pick this week, so I'm going to go with a team that's looking a lot better than people thought they'd be over the team that I absolutely hate. So Texans. Yeah, mostly because you hate them, and you're gonna be you're gonna be in Texas in three days, so or in a week, so yeah. yeah. Well, it, I won't be anywhere near Houston, but yeah. D- but yeah. Either way, um, I picked the Titans over the Bengals. I went with something a little bit more of a stretch. Um, I also Joe Burrow did all right last week, but are we sure that his leg is his? He's a hundred percent yet. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to say that's going to be my upset special this week, uh, mostly because the Titans need a win. And the Bengals, you know, Joe Burrow's a little banged up still. I think he's you got to look out for it. So that's why I picked it. Rich, 
Bears game, we got to pick it. I know you don't want to do this. And we got to pick both this week and next week's game. I'm sorry to tell you, Rich. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Broncos, Bears in Chicago. What are your thoughts? Well, Mike, I, I, neither team's really playing very well. Nope. Um, I'm going to go with the Broncos. Okay. Um, if anything, somebody's got to win this game. And if you take out what happened in Miami last week where they lost 70 to 20, 70 to 20, they, the Broncos have been have made games close to where they've come close to winning the games, whether it's a garbage time touchdown that makes the game closer than it really was, or they really played tough. Okay. Where, where the Bears just haven't had those close But if games. we're talking garbage time touchdowns, what was what was the 20 points scored in the game against Miami? Garbage time. So that's even further away than than what it actually is. Uh which is why I picked the Bears. I think the Bears they're going to do something this week. Um All right. Rich, and then they turn around and come back for Thursday night football. So we got to pick two Bears games this week. Yep. The only good thing about it is that we don't have to pick a Bears game next week <laughs> during next week's show. Yeah. Um. So it's tough to know how to pick this game. I almost wish that. <coughs> yeah. I I could give a winner for this game after knowing how they do against the Broncos, but I can't do that. So I'm gonna go with the Bears get their first victory against the. The commanders. I'm going to say that the Bears get their second victory as I pick the first victory to be against the Broncos. And this is where you start seeing the Bears that we expected to see start showing up. I don't think tomorrow's game is going to be a game where the Bears that we expected them to be show up. I think that's going to be a game where we're going to see them, you know, limp their way over. Okay. And, and in fact, on then four days rest, they are going to figure out and get their heads out of because here's what here's the thing, as we discussed last week, uh, um, sorry, I, um, Justin Fields talked about how he blamed he didn't blame blame but he blamed coaching as part of the reason why he didn't he he's been in his head too much. Rich, there's only four days. We keep, there's not going to be a lot of coaching going on. It is purely going to be on instinct. He's going to be back to the man that he is. Let's look for the Bears to look strong. And with that victory, we're going to see uh, the the Bears get back on track and make things happen. Right. Could be wishful thinking. It could be that could be their next week against the Broncos and the Commanders could be where they get back on the track to where people start wondering, are they good enough to make the playoffs? Yeah. Now, Rich, with that being said, you know what it's time for? It's time for some power rankings. Yeah, let's look at these power rankings. Um, this week. So with our Yep. So with our power rankings, we always give you who's in our, our top 10, where the Bears are, and who our bottom five are, Mike. So yep. where do you want to start, Mike? Bottom five or top 10? Um, I would like to start, let's start on a positive note and let's start number one. All right. So or actually one let's start in a middle note and let's start at number 10 and work our way to one at number okay. 10, rich. Who do you have? Well, Mike, right now I put the green Bay Packers at number 10, man. They, who did you put Mike? I, I put the, uh, Seattle Seahawks. Okay. I have the Seahawks at 11. Okay. I mean, for, for me, being they, they came back, they, what we thought was, was an unexpected win, uh, beating the bears. They barely, they lost a close game against the Falcons and they, they won a close game against the saints to where I just don't, for the Seahawks, I didn't like, I thought that the Seahawks, that the, their losses, their, their narrow victory over the Panthers and losing to the Rams were worse losses than the Falcons, who I expected could be a playoff team. So that's why I gave them number 10 over the Seahawks. Now, the ELO, which is a, a slightly scientific thing that we do uh, for this, 
actually has the Jacksonville Jaguars at number 10. Huh. But that is considering previous seasons into their into those rankings, not just what they've done this year. Uh, for comparison, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars all the way down at 17 based on what they've done this year. 16, I'm sorry. I have them down at 16. Mike, where do you have those Jaguars? With the ELO putting them at number 10. I, I'm confirming that, yeah, that is accurate. Um, you know, I have the Jaguars at... Let me get to it. Uh, I have them at six, or I have them at fifteen. Okay, that's fair. So, so Mike, who do you have at number? Uh, who does the power rankings have at number ten? Power rankings at number ten. Uh, <coughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers. I th- I think this might be screwed up. I might have to go look at this again, but. Uh, Okay. I'm just looking at some things real quick. Sorry. Okay. So um, while you're doing that, number nine for me, Mike, is where I put the Cleveland Browns. They that defense is looking just dominant with Jim Schwartz calling the plays and Miles Garrett going, going. Um, probably could be having one of his best defensive seasons in his career and with victories over the Bengals, the Bengals and Titans, I'm really liking what the Browns, what the Browns are doing. I know you probably don't want to see them rank that high, but I got to go off of what they've done on this short season. Who do you have at number nine, Mike? Um, I'm sorry. I'm finishing some stuff real quick. I actually have to change some settings. Uh, at number nine, that's what you're asking. Number nine. Number nine, that's right. Okay, let me. So we're gonna ignore the power rankings right now. Sorry, I okay. screwed that one up. At number nine, I have the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. Uh, we'll the Seahawks at ten. Ravens. Ravens at nine. All right, we'll get to where I have the Ravens a little higher on the list. Mike, give us number eight for you. Number eight, I have the Dallas Cowboys. All right, I put the Detroit Lions here at number eight. Okay, we'll get to them in a second. Um, okay. Rich, who do you got at number seven? The seven is where I put the Cowboys. See, seven's where I put the Steelers. Okay. I have the Steelers a little bit lower. Maybe it's because of a bias against them. I don't think um, so. I actually think I have them ranked a little high. Um, okay. Mostly because, and again, it's not out of liking them, but more out of, looking at Mike Tomlin and how good of a coach he is. Okay. So. And, and, and that's fair. But I mean, I, I guess I've tried to base my rankings on who they've beaten, who they've lost. I can go with that too. Um, so I, I put the Steelers all the way down at 12. Okay. Who do you got at number okay. six, Rich? Number six is where I put those Baltimore Ravens. You know what? This is where I have the Detroit Lions. Um, okay. Y- look at who they beat. Mm-hmm. You, you, you talked about how you you picked who they beat and 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 who they lost to. Those two victories are huge. One of them, yeah, I understand that they were Kelsey-less Kansas City Chiefs, but it's still Patrick Mahomes. Okay. So. So we're in the same neighborhood with with in the pick ranges of yeah. like the besides the Steelers having a big having us having a big gap between the Steelers. Yep. The Steelers, most of our picks are in the same neighborhood, Mike. All right, we're moving into top five, Mike. Who do you have at number five? Well, Rich, uh, I have the alliterative Buffalo Bills. All right, the first team we've agreed on is I also have the Bills at number five. Number four, Mike, is where I put the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, not a bad place to put them. I have them a little higher than that, but I have the Kansas City Chiefs here at number four. All right. I put the Chiefs at number three. Okay. put it three, Mike? Uh, this is where I have Miami. Now, don't get me wrong. I mm-hmm. think they are I, – I would put them, as the kids say, as sus. Because I don't trust it. I don't I, trust it either, but I'm, I'm riding the wave. I'm riding the wave and taking them – 
and I'm going to, just like it probably last year when they were rolling undefeated and then started as the weather got colder and Tua suffers his first concussion, that's when they started sliding back in the rankings. Yep. So right now, I put them up at number two. Okay, and number two is where I have the Philadelphia Eagles. All right. I mean, I put the Eagles at number four because while they've been undefeated, their games, their wins against the Patriots and Vikings just did not look like they were their dominant selves that we saw how they well they played last year. So yep. that's why I put them at four. I can understand that, especially against the uh, Vikings where you uh, they are uh, inner conference, which makes it a harder like if you lose those inner conference games, eventually it's going to come bite you in the butt. And then number one, Rich. I have those San Francisco 49ers that we talked about earlier about how good they are. This is why I picked that game. Mm -hmm. has very little to do with how terrible the the Cardinals are and has everything to do with the fact that the 49ers look like the best team in football right now. Yeah, I'd have to agree. They've been – because it just hasn't been narrow victories. Those have been clear-cut dominant victories that they've been putting together. So, Mike, going into our top – going into the bottom five, Mike – at 28. We're gonna have to, I don't think we're going to have to differentiate between the bottom five and where we put the Bears this week. Right. So Mike, At number 28, who do you got, Rich? Uh, this is where I put the Arizona Cardinals. Yep. Before, I know that we weren't tracking power rankings uh, prior to at least sharing them uh, this week. Um, I mean, the Cardinals rose all the way from being the uh, – my number 32 team, but with this victory over the Cardinals, they're going all the way up to 28. I 100% agree. 100% agree. Uh, at 29, Rich, I have Houston Texans. They're doing better than they th- than everybody thought they were, which okay. is why they're not 32. All right. So I put the New York Jets here. Okay. I mean, they, they squeaked out a victory against the Bills, but I think they... they I think more of the Bills lost that game more than the Jets won that game. And I can go with that. Um, and I think that the, that those two teams are in opposite trajectories. Uh, as Houston continues to, to play better, uh, you're going to see them win some games. I don't know that I trust that New York is going to win games with mm-hmm. the man at the helm. I, I think Wilson is a, could be a good quarterback, but I don't think he's, the team was built for him with him in mind. And I think we're going to see – them continue to decline as this season goes on at number 30 rich i have the carolina panthers i put the panthers here as well so if anything it, it's tough for me not to have an 0 three team in the bottom five yep but of the of the four Owen three teams. I think I have the Vikings a little higher. Oh, one hundred percent. The Vi- I, Maybe I probably have the Vikings. We'll go to where where we have the Vikings after we do these last yeah, last two couple. So, but if anything, Carolina has lost maybe some close games. Yep. At least they've looked like they've been in games better than the two teams that I have ranked below them. And so speaking of which, Rich, who is your thirty-one? The Chicago Bears. Yeah. <sighs> why Bears. And, and again I will admit the only reason why they are not 32 is because a team lost by uh, let a, that the Broncos let Miami get 70 on them that's the only reason yep. why they're not 32 right now yep I, I totally agree with that okay totally agree that's why I have the Broncos at number 32 so Mike where did you put the Minnesota Vikings, the only team that we haven't ranked yet. I have them at 25. I have not put the uh, – I have not given you where I have the Packers yet, by the way. Okay. Um, I put the Vikings at 25 as well. I just – Mostly – yeah, they're 0-3, but I think on paper they should be better than 0-3, which is yeah. why I put them above the Texans and the Giants. And, and like Cardinals. you said earlier about the, the, uh, about the Eagles, they were close games. They've been in every one of those games. It's not the it's not the fault. Uh, it, I mean, it is their fault, but they were close games, so I can't really. Exactly. Um, yeah, and their loss against the uh, their loss against the Bolts was a close loss too. And then I have the Green Bay Packers at eighteen. I'm oh. still okay. not. Sh- they they are up. Uh, week uh, preseason, I think I had them down in the the low twenties, um, but. 
still am unsure of what to think of Jordan Love. And uh, by the way, this does not include that game. Hmm. Okay. So that does not include that game at all. The Thursday night game. So. Okay. No, no, I, I did not make, I did not base my rankings off of what happened on Thursday either. If I had, they probably would not be in the top 10. So the Cleveland but. Browns, you have them at nine. I have them at 16. Now, Ooh, I admit okay. part of it is bias. But the so other part is. See Deshaun, Jackson, Deshaun Watson do well? The, yeah, but the other part is, do I really think that this team is that much better than what their record shows? Their record doesn't show that they're a great team. The record barely shows that they're on. They're at half, by the way. I put them right at half. I put them a. I put them at the team that's, just right at sixteen, right at half. So if they continue to win, will they work their way up, up the list for you? What's this continue to win? They've won one game. Um, they've won two games. They beat the Bengals and they beat the Titans. And they barely, it was a close game against the Steelers. You have the Steelers something on our chart is wrong. We did not get the, there, we, we didn't. Did I put their put the win? Did I put the W wrong on the Bengals? No, you have it right. You have it right. Yeah, I did. Uh, it just didn't add it up. Oh, it didn't add it up. That's weird. It adds everybody else, but it did not add them up. There it is. Okay. I don't know why me doing it here. Does it? Yeah, okay. Uh maybe I, maybe I would put them a little bit higher. Um yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, you, you that's fair. You you faced a um the Bengals game was close. Yeah. And maybe that game maybe that game comes out different if it's not pouring down rain. And the type of the Titans game is a very dominant win for them. Yeah. So, I mean, they're winning big because of their defense, not because of not because of their offense and what yep. Sean Watson's doing. Okay, so Rich, after we deal with the, now that we're done with those power rankings, do you have any other power ranking things that you want to talk about before we move on to our uh, our quick hits and let people know that uh, October thirteenth and fourteenth uh, that week we're going to do our NHL preview, and then the October twentieth we're going to give you our NBA preview. Let's get to our quick hits, Rich. Biggest news to come out of sports this week is, I guess the XFL and the USFL are doing what makes sense, and they plan to merge. Yeah, that makes sense. It just makes sense. It makes sense. It, yeah. It just makes sense. I don't yeah. mean they're not. It isn't like they're they're not sharing any markets. They're not. They're not sharing any markets, and they're not. So it isn't like they have to see, all right, well, well does, does the UFL team stay in Orlando or does the XFL or do they get an XFL des- designation? Yeah. So pooling their resources, pooling, the, pooling their players together, I think it's going to be best. And it's going to make them make those two leagues be able to survive. It, competing against each other never really made sense to me. And it looks like they are going to uh, work with the NFL more. Which is great too. If yep. you're wanting to develop players, so hopefully maybe you should, maybe you'll see some guys that are practice squad players get filtered down to these teams to actually play in meaningful football games. Yep. But okay. More on that later as the deal hasn't been finalized. Rich, like what's been going on in esports? Uh, we talk about the this match? week was a super tight match. We went, <clears throat> we actually ended up going into overtime in there, uh, which was crazy in our first match uh we pulled out the victory there then we uh we ended up coming in clutch at the end of our second match so we we still haven't dropped a a round but we have dropped some games um and actually a couple our best player has dropped a game or two 
uh, now. So let's move into a spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. We are going to talk about the Mass Singer in about 10 seconds. So if you don't want to hear about it, we'll talk to you next week. If you do want to hear about it, stay tuned. This is your final spoiler alert. So this week in the Mass Singer, what did you think, Rich? Uh, so far, they looks like they are going back to their normal format that they that we everybody's used to, which I like. That's the first thing I want to yeah. talk about. Yeah, I, I was glad to see that it was six singers coming out yep. and performing, and it not being three, and do we potentially unmasking two people yep. on one night this so early in the competition? So overall, being two people. There were two identi- two fairly obvious choices to go home between uh, between who actually went home and who stayed. But I think, it, I mean, based off these first six singers, did some really good lineup so far. Yeah, yeah, really good. Um, so Rich, I think this week the uh, diver should have gone home. All right, I, I don't disagree with you. But for my, I, I think the the right person went home in the rubber ducky. But I, I don't disagree with you with the diver being going home, going home instead. Though. Okay, so give the people the information. The rubber ducky went uh, home. The rubber ducky went home, and Ken, Doctor Ken Jung, got the pick, got the guess right, as it was Anthony Anderson. Yeah, I love Anthony Anderson, and I'm a little bummed that he did go home, um, but. Uh yeah, I mean he went home. He, he I do I think I think he was the second worst of it overall, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Um okay, Rich. With that, do you have any shout outs that you need to give? Um yeah, I got two. I got to give a belated birthday to my brother Josh. As his birthday was on uh, last Sunday. Happy birthday, Josh. Yeah, and uh, since um. She'll probably get shouted out during our baseball episode on Tuesday as well. Uh, but uh, my wife, she's yeah. uh, my wife, Amy. She's um, that's the reason that I won't be on air with you uh, next Saturday uh, because we'll be down in Texas to uh, celebrate her birthday. Okay, happy birthday, Amy. We'll uh, talk to you later this week, hopefully. Uh, with that, uh, we have no show shout outs and uh, we have nothing else. So, Rich, if people want to get a show shout out, Live action shout out. How do they do mm-hmm. that? You know what, Mike? Watch our live feed episode. Watch the live feed on Facebook, and you can find the live feed over on Fans of Balls and Sticks as well as Balls and Sticks, uh, which is, and you can find the poll questions. Vote on our poll questions every week. We'll give yep. you a shout out that way as well. And you can find the poll questions out on either Mike and I's Facebook page as well as at Fans of Balls and Sticks and Balls and Sticks. Mike, if they are listening, uh, if they're watching us here on the Facebook and they want to take us with you and just have the audio of us, where can they find it? Well, you can find us anywhere where you find your normal podcasts. Spotify, Amazon, iHeart, Apple, and Google. Plus just more. Okay, Rich, they're listening to us. They want to see our pretty faces, but they hate Mark Zuckerberg and they don't want to give them any of their information. What's a better way? What's a way for them to watch us? You know, find go and find us on YouTube. As yep. You get the same audio, audio and video feed that you get on Facebook, just at a different location. Yep. With that, Rich, what's it time to do? All right, Mike. Go ahead and go ahead and roll that outro, and make sure to tune in on Tuesday as we look at the baseball playoffs. We'll talk to you then. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich.